Welcome. I am so grateful you are here. Let's expand our consciousness. Information leads to transformation. Open your heart. Open your mind. We're on this ascension ride. It's an honor to bring this information to you. This is the Tabitha Polaris Show. On today's show, Mike Iamelli joins us to discuss rethinking your life purpose. Mike Iamelli is a clinical herbalist, life purpose expert, brand strategist. For nearly a decade, his sacred branding system has helped hundreds of artists, healers, entrepreneurs, and spiritual seekers to discover their purpose and build a resonant brand around their heightened sensitivities. From life purpose to astral travel to divination to plant medicine, Mike loves demystifying esoteric spiritual concepts and helping us to see how these energies are already at play in our everyday life. Mike's also the author of Enough Already, Create Success on Your Own Terms. He's shared his provocative and vulnerable take on life in dozens of magazines, podcasts, and online publications, including a personal interview with NPR about his viral story on rethinking sexuality in his first same-sex relationship. He currently lives in Somerville, Massachusetts with his husband and two adorable dogs. So Mike, welcome to the show. I am super excited to have you. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Tabitha. I'm so excited to be here. And I love your microphone. Is that a gold microphone? It's actually silver, but it's um, silver. Yeah, I like. I don't that. know. It looks gold on my end. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> You're sitting over there like a king with mm-hmm. your podcast set up. That royalty. Absolutely. So I always pick an oracle card or angel card for my guests. Mm-hmm. I tune into your energy, and today I picked for you, my friend, magic manifesting came out. Mm. So your dreams, visions, and goals are becoming reality. Stay focused. I know that you are a definitely a master in your life. I could tell you're very happy and you're fulfilling your purpose or just following your joy and helping others. So I think that's a beautiful card for you. Yeah, thank you. That is beautiful. I really appreciate it. So beautiful. So I'm so excited to talk to you today because You have a very interesting take on life purpose. You say most people see life purpose as something that needs to be found or achieved. And then that's like that state of lack. And it's like a struggle. Who wants that? And Mm -hmm. you gave me such a light, a hope, uh, such a solace in the way you look at it. You need to explain what your take is on redefining our life purpose. I'm so intrigued about this whole concept. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Well, you know, I think many of us think of purpose as something that's achievable or aspirational. So we'll say things like, oh, my purpose is to start a podcast. My purpose is to be a life coach. My purpose is to write a book. And all of that stuff is cool. But here's the thing. If you can achieve it, that means you can also fail it. And that doesn't make any sense. How could you fail your purpose? (laughs) And furthermore, if you could achieve it, that implies you didn't have it at a certain point. So did you just not have a purpose as a baby? Do you not have a purpose like in your relationships when you're not working? It doesn't make any sense. And it really you know, feeds into this overly kind of capitalistic, never good enough culture that we have, where it's like, I work with you know, hundreds and hundreds of people over the last decade. And I will tell you 75% of the time when people want to know their purpose, they want to know the job that they want to do. The other 25%, it's about relationships. So those are the two containers we talk about, job or relationship. And what about your purpose in getting dressed, your purpose in healing from trauma, your purpose in hanging out with friends, your purpose in anything? You know, we are such complex beings and we've had a purpose even since we were babies, right? And so the way I talk about it is before we had language, before we had conditioning or desires or, you know, things we wanted to achieve, we had sensitivities. We had things that we were sensitive to. You know, some kids are sensitive to music. And if they're sensitive to music, they can probably hear notes that I can't hear. If some people are sensitive to freedom, they're going to feel trapped really easily. And they're always going to be looking for opportunities to free themselves or free others. And that's going to be consistent in every aspect of their life. You know, sensitive means to sense more. 
we literally see, taste, touch, smell, hear more of life. We're more alive there. So of course, we're going to have more trauma around those things because we experience life deeper. But we're also going to have more joy, more expertise. We're going to split hairs and see nuances that others can't see. It's the natural energy medicine or gift we give. And it's what we most want to feel. And so what I'm really interested in is tracking a person's entire life, kind of mapping their lived experiences and figuring out what sensitivities show up. What are those levers they just naturally pull every time they're successful or fulfilled in life? And then how do we build a life, a brand, a business, relationships around that? So you you tap it like, but some people just don't know. Like say they have a million interests, they're good at a lot of things, a lot of things bring them joy. How do you go back in time and remember or like focus on, you know, that beginning part of your life just for people listening? Because I love this whole thing, but how do you get there? So it's actually really, really simple because the same sensitivities show up in literally any moment. So you don't have to remember being a baby. You can remember any moment, any moment of trauma, any moment of joy. And, you know, I know people listening are listening and saying, yeah, yeah, Mike, but you don't know me. I'm all over the place. Listen, I have worked with literally hundreds of people. Every single person thinks they're all over the place. I'm all over the place. My stories don't seem to make sense. And Do you mind if we tell a little story about my way to find this? I was going to ask you, please do. Yeah, I think we need that at this point. So I, you know, I started life, you know, early on in life, I was pretty successful. So I started a public relations agency when I was 22 years old. And I worked with, you know, healthcare politicians and tech billionaires and celebrities and a lot of high profile people. And I really loved my job. I was a branding expert. And one day, a few years later, when I was 24, I woke up and I was vomiting blood. And it was terrifying, as you can imagine. I was vomiting blood every day for months. It didn't stop. I was rushed to the emergency room. I was seeing different doctors. Um, You know, it got so bad that I had an, an accident at work. I shit my pants at work. Like I could not control my bowels anymore, my body. Um, I couldn't get off the couch some days. I couldn't drive myself. And so at this moment, um, you know, I started exploring Reiki and you know alternative medicine and herbalism, spirituality, and all these things just to try to heal myself because I didn't know what was wrong with me. And at the time, I had two roommates. One of them was my older sister's friend who had recently moved to the city, and so she moved in with me. But she had a boyfriend, so she was hardly ever there. And the other one was a guy I knew from college who just moved in with me because he needed a place to live as well. And so by default, this guy I knew from college um, kind of became my caretaker. He was a medical professional and I couldn't cook for myself. I couldn't go to appointments. I couldn't, you know, drive. And so, you know, in this process of him caring for me, a few months into it, I realized I feel something for him. And at the time, this was really, um, you know, to give you some context, strange for me because I had never been with a man and at this point, never consciously been interested in the man. It wasn't something that I was like, you know, that horrible if I ever feel that. I I mean, I consider myself a pretty open person, but it's kind of like, it's just not my cup of tea. I'm not interested. And so this was weird because it didn't feel sexual. It didn't even feel romantic, but it felt like something's going on here. And I don't know, is this like, I'm afraid I'm going to die tomorrow. And this is a person in close proximity. I don't know what this is, but I think at that moment I had been writing handwritten letters to everyone in my life that I had ever wronged or like felt, you know, hurt by. And like, I was just putting it all out there. Cause I was like, I cannot, I've got to let it all out. I can have to heal the sickness. And so I said to myself, I'm just going to speak up. I, you know, if, if I didn't, wasn't afraid I was going to die, I probably would brush it under the rug, but I thought I could die tomorrow. I'm going to speak up. And so I said to him, Garrett, this is strange. I don't know how you react, um, but I feel something here. There's some connection here. And that led to about two months of conversations, which led to about two years of exploring can a relationship work. And so we still dated women. We weren't exclusive. We kind of, you know, through a whole long process and we are today married. And so as you know, I'm in that journey of that process, I realized I need to leave my job because I'm getting this sick. Like clearly something's up here. And so I'm now, you know, planning to leave my job, I enrolled in herbalism school and nutrition school, and I took every psychic class I could find. So I'm, you can imagine, right? I'm working full time here because I gave a year's notice at work. Never recommend doing that, but I was an owner. I felt like this is what I should do. So I was working full time, 
going to two schools full time, taking a bunch of extra classes, healing myself and navigating my first same sex relationship. This was not an easy year in my life. But the year ended and it just so happened that December was the deadline that Garrett and I decided, you know, we moved in just the two of us and we decided if we were serious, we were going to tell people about this. And so that coincided with my last week of work. And so kind of I was open and out to the world and I was the herbalist to Boston's tech entrepreneurs because I thought, well, you know, I know these people and I got really sick. I can probably help a lot of them, but I didn't love it if I'm being honest with you. And so I thought, okay, I have all these stories. I'm going to start writing about my experiences. Not yet my relationship, because I wasn't ready for that, but about, you know, success and redefining success and really looking at our passions and thinking about purpose. And so at the time I thought, well, okay, I really am interested in this idea about purpose. And I started writing and within three months, a publisher reached out to me and said, hey, Mike, you know, your blog is taking off. Can I give you a book deal? And I was like, what? Just, yeah, right? Like totally random. I did not write a book proposal. Can I remind you of the card? Ma magic manifesting. That's right. Obviously, that's right. you've always been a magic manifester. Right. So I'm sitting here like, well, you know, they say that when you're on your purpose, when you're on your path, the universe just gives you things on a silver platter. This must be my silver platter. This is totally my purpose. So I write this book. And in the book, I talk about my relationship. And I think, well, shit. Now I have to tell people because, you know, I've told close friends and family, but I can't have friends seeing it on the shelf of Barnes and Noble. And I didn't tell them about this relationship. Like I have to tell people. So I wrote a blog post on my blog about this relationship. And at the time I was writing for a publication who asked if I would adapt this blog post for their publication and just add a few more details. And I thought, okay, it's basically the same post. I can do that. So I wrote it and I went to bed that night. The next morning I woke up and 100,000 people had shared it. So it went viral. It went viral. And, you know, I don't think uh, we can even imagine what it's like to wake up to millions of people talking about your sex life. It was the most single-handedly most overwhelming experience of my life. I mean, I got literally thousands of emails that week. I'm not kidding when I say that. I couldn't even possibly read them all. Um, a lot of hate mail. A lot of supportive messages. I mean, people from all over the world, um, people with similar stories, you know, friends who wanted to speak up about same sex attraction that they never explored, like all different types of things I just did not expect. And so, you know, at this time, I had NPR calling me and Huffington Post and Yahoo News. And I'm like, I'm not even making money. I don't have a business model. I'm not an herbalist anymore. I've got a book coming out in a year. And like, what am I doing with my life? I don't know my purpose. I'm so ashamed. So I went back to the drawing board and I have read, I kid you not, every life purpose book out there. I have gone to every training. You don't know how many times I have heard at the end of these 60 minutes, I will know my purpose. I have heard that plenty of times in my life, it never ends up happening. But I said, okay, all these books tell me, all these trainings tell me, figure out your passions, figure out your skills, then figure out what the world needs and find that middle point. So, okay. I'm all over the place. How do these things connect? You know, I'm an herbalist and I'm a branding PR guy and I've got the same sex relationship and this big sickness and, you know, this viral article and blogging, none of these things connect. And so I really sat with this for days and I thought, oh my God, it is so obvious. How did I miss it? I meant to create a blogging course and yeah, it's going to be about helping people to get a book deal, but it's going to be deep and spiritual. It's going to be about finding your inner voice and knowing who you are and all these beautiful things and healing yourself. And so I had almost no money left, you can imagine, because uh, this was at the end of this year. I hadn't been you know, working much. My savings couldn't carry me that far. But I thought if I know my purpose, you know, all these books are telling me I have to go pro. I have to really go for it. I think, well, I've got to put everything into this. So I got the fancy lighting kit and the microphone. And, you know, I had a business partner and web designer and editing software and all this good stuff put thousands of dollars into this thing. But I knew, I just knew this would take off. And so I put it out into the world and five people bought it. It was a colossal failure. I lost thousands of dollars on this thing. And I thought, well, shit, that's it. Like I, I'm done. You know, I am, I, I can't keep putting myself out there because I actually went for it. I went for and chose love. I got the book deal. You know, I had millions of people talking about my sex life. Like I really feel like I put myself out there and I still failed and I still don't have a purpose. And I just feel so ashamed. 
And so I thought, well, you know, I want to flip this because I want to at least say that I did. So I took a risk hard enough to fail, right? At least I did something that even enabled me to fail. That should be celebrated. And so I hosted what I called a failure celebration. And it was really just to say, like, I feel like a failure, but I want to feel like, okay, before I go beg my partners to take me back, because I don't even know if I have a job at my own company, but I'm going to go beg them, pleading um, tomorrow. So today I just want to host a failure celebration. And so what I did was I went into a Facebook group that I was a part of, um, and I offered branding sessions, just free branding for anyone, because I'm not successful, but maybe you can be. And so I filled my schedule. It was literally six back-to-back-to-back sessions. I stopped sessions to pee or eat, but I was like, I don't care. I'm just going to give it. And, you know, I mentioned before that I'm used to working with these tech billionaires or healthcare politicians, but these were artists and healers and witches and psychics and life coaches and therapists and all types of cool people. And I ran these sessions with them, just the same branding work I had always done. And at the end of each of these sessions, every one of them said to me some variation of, Mike, you didn't just tell me my brand. You explained my entire life purpose. It all makes sense. And so you can imagine, I'm sitting there like, what the fuck? What? Like, I, I, don't, I don't know how to react to this. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, this is just your know, branding. And so at this point, what did I have to lose? I went and did the exact same process on myself. And as I did this process myself and just kind of mapped these experiences, I came out with six words. And these words are aligned, zany, free, unmistakable, successful, and vulnerable. And there was this click in my mind. And it was like, oh my God, I know why I'm attracted to Garrett, why I have this relationship. You know, he's the person who allows me to feel most vulnerable. He, you know, I feel unmistakable. I literally cannot make a mistake in his eyes. Like I am weird and zany and goofy. And I see why in PR I couldn't hold, you know, the vulnerable and the zany, but I could hold the other things. And I could see why, you know, this blogging course didn't hold all these pieces. And it just started making sense of every moment I've ever had that was successful, I felt all of these things. And I've been all of these things. Every time I'm having coffee with a best friend and hours are flying by and genius is spilling out of me, I feel and express all of these things. And every moment of trauma, every challenging moment in my life, I feel the opposite of these things. And so I'm sitting there with my little epiphany here, big epiphany, I guess, and I get an email from one of the women that I had worked with that day. And she said to me, hey, Mike, I told my friend about this. She wants to hire you and buy this. Do you sell it? Like, what do you call this work? I don't know. It's branding. I guess it's life purpose. It's kind of sacred. I'll call it sacred branding. I just made up that term, slapped it on. The next day I had a client. Three weeks later, I had 30 clients. And that was seven years ago. So here we are today. I never ended up leaving. And, you know, I've worked with many people from, you know, every walk of life, drag queens, gang on TV shows, comedians, you know, people improving their sex life, um, witches, psychics, a whole bunch of people. But what I can say is that I've never met a person who doesn't feel all over the place. And we can see from my story, I'm freaking all over the place, right? There's a lot there that doesn't make sense, but it's not about the containers. It's not about, you know, on surface, same sex relationship, viral article, herbalist, life coach don't make sense. But what essence do they all combine? What do they make me feel? What energy medicine am I sharing or expressing or being attracted to in each of those moments? That's the underlying question. That's the subjectivity or the, th the kind of true essence that I'm experiencing. And so it doesn't matter where we start. We do not have to remember our you know, early experiences. We don't have to go into every single trauma. But when we start mapping experiences, we're going to see those same themes come up over and over and over again. So basically you now do soul mapping and it's called sacred branding. Are that the same? Yep, that's right. Yep, that's what it is. Yeah. This is an incredible story. Thank you for yeah. sharing. And I just want you to repeat, if you can remember what you said, you said you, you combine purpose, passion, and what else? So uh, I don't know exactly what I said in that moment, but one thing I, I do in this work, I, I talk about a lot, is that I help people to, you know, come up this reliable, predictable formula for success and fulfillment, for knowing where they're successful and fulfilled in life, where they feel purposeful. And I kind of describe the way that we all live our lives, like shooting darts in the dark. So most of us are shooting those darts, trying to hit that bullseye so bad, but the lights are off. And it's really, really hard. So honestly, pretty low chance we're going to hit the bullseye. But sometimes we do, right? Once in a while, there's a miracle. 
and we hit that bullseye and it's awesome. We're like, oh, this just worked out. Like I, you know, was really successful with this client or I met this cool person or I had this great interview. And even when that happens, which is great, we don't know why. We don't know what we did or how to repeat it, right? Why was this art piece so amazing? Was it the medium I used? Was it that I had free time? Did I feel inspired? Like, what was it that really gave me that? So what I'm interested in, what I talk about with this work is when we are doing mapping your sensitivities or sacred branding, we're kind of looking at every time in your life you've hit that bullseye and we're flipping on the light switch. We're saying, what happened there? What's the pattern you're doing? I can't guarantee for you that you'll hit the bullseye every time. I don't know how good at darts you're going to be, but what I can tell you is you know how. So in my relationship, if I'm struggling or my husband and I in a fight, I can say, okay, Mike, what am I not feeling vulnerable? Okay, be more vulnerable here. And I have to practice. I don't always know how to be vulnerable in every moment, but the more I practice, I know that any moment in my life where I've been truly vulnerable, truly zany, truly unmistakable, I've been successful. Okay. So I think it would be really cool if you could ex- like maybe show the audience like a five, 10 minute mapping yeah, of me maybe to, to show your experience. Maybe I'm a little scared. I'm going to be very vulnerable right now. I'll be honest. I'll answer the questions honestly. It will be really, really <laughs> fun. And this is just, okay. you know, like a, a short intro because, you know, I'm so glad you're saying this. You know, this work, it sounds cool, but you're kind of like, but what? It's like very conceptual and abstract. <laughs> So, you know, in five minutes, and this is just my shoddy made up version, but it will help us kind of get a sense of what we're talking about. So I'm going to ask you a few a few questions, Tabitha. And the first one I want you to think about is think about three jobs or roles you've had in your life. What I mean by that is it could be, you know, a job you were paid for, it could be a volunteer position. It could be a role like a mother or a spouse or a friend. You know, it could just be any way that you were kind of supporting or helping another person or interacting with someone. So I want you to, in your mind, just kind of get up three of them. And I want you to tell me one of those jobs or roles and three things that you made people feel. So for example, if you were a teacher, maybe you made people, you know, students feel engaged with the material. Maybe you you made them feel safe or empowered to learn more, whatever it is. So just one of those jobs or roles and three things you made people feel. So singer, Mm -hmm. joy, Mm -hmm. And then you want me to pick three more adjectives? Yeah. So just as a singer, three things you made people feel and being a singer. So joyful, maybe. Magic. Mm -hmm. Holding the space for a a personal healing. So and we can just call it healing, right? That you, a gift you gave was healing. healing. Yeah. I would say healing because that's perfect. Okay. You helped me figure that one out. I was trying to like figure out the adjective for that one. (laughs) I love it. Sometimes you just got to talk it out. So joyful, magical healing. These are gifts you gave. Oh. Okay. That's awesome. Yes. Well, those are the three you told me. So, all right. Wow. So now give me another job and three things you made people feel. Mother, Mm -hmm. um, safe, Mm -hmm. loved, Mm -hmm. protected. Beautiful. Safe, loved, and protected as a mother. Okay. One more job and three things you made people feel. I don't know how to describe it. I was an essential oil educator. Mm -hmm. Um, So I guess uh, holistic. Can I combine... The, the whole holistic thing I do with Reiki yes, healing yes. and educating about health. Yes, and, this is your and, game. You, yes. So I'll just put it, all those jobs under holistic mm-hmm. and I will do peace, mm-hmm. serenity, yeah. and health. Mm. Uh, healthy? Yeah, sure. So you maybe you'll feel healthy. Vitality peaceful. or something? Mm, yeah, vital. I love that. Um, Vital's better than healthy. Vitality. Yeah, I love that. I love that. You, you gave that vitality, yeah. made them feel vital, peaceful, um, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. And serenity. It was like, it was like healing on all many levels, yeah. physical, emotional, spiritual. So I was trying to I like, quickly. I like it. It's a beautiful term. Okay. okay. So now I want you to think about a moment in your life that was really challenging or frustrating that doesn't feel re-traumatizing to think about. So we don't want to go back into trauma, but a moment that was just like, oof, that was a tough moment in my life. And you don't have to tell us what it is if you don't want to, but I want you to tell me three things you felt in that moment. Exhausted, Mm -hmm. defeated, failure, Mm -hmm. or... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So exhausted, defeated, and failure. Oof, thank you. So now I want you to think if you had a magic wand and you could have changed the whole situation and made yourself feel anything you would have rather have felt in that moment, what you really wish you could have felt... What do you think you would have rather have felt than exhausted, defeated, and failure? Abundance, mm-hmm. success, mm-hmm. and joy. I love it. And joy. Abundance, success, and joy. Okay. One final question, and then we can stop mapping. Um, 
I want you to think about, let's flip it and think about one of the happiest, most successful moments in your life. Maybe a moment of miracle or synchronicity or something just feeling really, really good. You can tell us about it if you want. And then just tell me three things that you felt in that moment. Lots of moments in life, but you said synchronicity. Mm -hmm. So I had a vision of this golden angel during meditation. Mm -hmm. And it was at a moment in my life where I was in a lot of physical pain. It was before I discovered holistic health. And I was in a yoga class asking the universe just for help. Yeah. I, was, I was in a lot of pain. And I saw an angel that was gold. And then I, in my search for a Reiki master to study with, I looked at every single person in my area because I thought it was very important mm -hmm. who to choose to study with. And when I popped on this website, the angel that I saw in my vision was on the website. Yeah. Same as that color, same as that angel. Yeah. And I felt at that moment, that was kind of like shifting me into a whole other realm by taking my talents and funneling them more into healing and helping, um, I don't know, opening up the world, opening up my kind of universe to holistic health and healing. So that angel was really magical. So um, three things you felt. Sure. Expanded consciousness, mm -hmm. curiosity. Mm -hmm. Because I wanted to learn more about this universe. I felt empowered. I felt more connected to the universe. Yeah. I don't know what yeah. um, adjective. So empowered, I guess. Yeah, those are beautiful words. Okay, let's stop mapping. And again, this is my like shoddy, quick version here. And for anyone listening who wants this, I have an actual worksheet of all this and a little bit more our website for free, just mikeimle.com slash map. So you don't have to just listen and try to figure it out yourself. You can actually download the worksheet and just go do it too. Um, but Tabitha, as we um, start to unpack this, let's look at a few of the words that we heard. So first of all, we heard these themes of magical, you know, consciousness, uh, synchronicity, spirituality come up a lot. So let's group those together in, I don't know, let's call them magical for right now. So that's one sensitivity we can hold on to. We heard healing, vitality, healthy all come up together. So maybe we'll use that as vitality or vital as one that we're going to call. We heard about safe protected, empowered, you know, open come up a lot. So maybe we'll have safe be another, you know, category here. Um, we had loved come up quite a bit. So we heard that word loved come up a little bit. So just right now, just playing. And again, this is a shoddy version. We're already seeing sensitivities of, let's say, empowered, safe, magical, loved. And uh, what else did I just say? Uh, and vital, vital. Vital. And so, okay, I'm going to guess without knowing you too well, that in some of the most successful, happy, really good moments of your life, you felt magical and vital and safe and empowered and loved. And in moments that were really challenging or really not good, you felt the opposite of those things. Maybe you felt lifeless. Maybe you felt disempowered. Maybe you felt unloved or dis, you know, unworthy or any of these opposite of these things. So what we're seeing here is a reliable, predictable formula. We're getting a sense of what success, fulfillment, and purpose feel like to you and what the opposite is. Now, in the little bit I know about you, um, the magical consciousness, Reiki, witchy, awesome work that you do, would that be a good container? Well, let's take a look. Would it be magical? Would it be vital and bringing vitality back into this world? Would it be you know, empowering and creating safe space for people of all different kinds to come in here? Yeah, I think so. That's a beautiful container for you. Would podcasting be a good container for you? Well, it depends what type of podcasting. It's got to bring in the magic, right? We know that. It's got to bring in that vitality. So we're probably thinking about spiritual and wellness podcasting. We're thinking guests in that realm because that's what's going to light you up and make you feel really, really good. If you're on talking about, I don't know, like computer science podcast, probably not the podcast for you. We already know that. We can start to predict. And the cool thing is, intuitively, you've probably done this in your life because you know what you're drawn to, but we don't do it continuously because here's the thing. In our crazy world today, we've got Facebook and Instagram and all these things pulling us away from our sensitivities, pulling us away from our subjectivity. And when we're stuck and lost and confused and have lack of any kind, we forget. We forget that, wait a minute, if I have success anywhere in my life, if I have a successful friendship, a successful job, one successful client, I've already got it. 
that resonance, that magnetism that led to success there is my key, my formula, but I forget what it is. And I think all the time, well, yeah, I have this great marriage, but how am I going to translate that into making money? And it can seem really confusing, but the exact same essence we share, why our partners love us, why our children love us, why our favorite clients love us is the reason that what people want from us. They want to come to our website. And the second they come to your website, feel magic, feel vitality, right? Yeah. Feel safe. And maybe you use that language. And I'll say one more thing because I can't shut up right now. It's, you know, you can literally use that language and say, you know, I create safe space to empower people to step into their own vital vitality and find the magic and love of life. Like that could be right on the website in literal ways, in figurative ways. If you are on the podcast, and you don't know how to answer something, you can do the same thing. You can, someone says to you, hey, Tabitha, during COVID, what do we need to know as spiritual people? And you're kind of like, oh shit, this is a big question. And you're like, well, you know, there's a lot going on in the world right now. But what we've really seen is that there's a, there's a need for more love in this world right now. There's a need for more empowerment and to realize this vitality, this strength that comes in connection and magic with one another. And so I you know, can't tell you everything, but what I can tell you is that when we learn to love ourselves and love ourselves more, to feel more empowered, and most importantly, to recognize the miracles and magic all around us, that's what's most important to me. And that's why I'm doing the work that I'm doing. Obviously, you could answer that better than I can, but all we're doing is taking those five words and throwing a few ands and buts in there, and there you go. And it's resonant because it's who you are. Oh, thank you so much for demonstrating this beautiful, amazing process. And you helped me, so I just wanted to thank yeah. you. That was really fun. Yeah, of course. I, uh, so one quick question. Shoot. So say we figure out all of this, makes a lot of sense, but there's lots of ways we can express mm -hmm. this. You know, like I could do a podcast, I could be a public speaker, I could make music, mm -hmm. I could um, teach, I could just focus on, you know, making videos. Like there's so yeah. many different ways, right? So like you, you started this, this and that. And like, so you think you created something amazing, you put it out in the world. Is it just a matter of advertising? If it doesn't resonate with um, the world, if no one hears it yet, like what is that missing piece of like, if you keep trying different ways to shine what you want to spread in the world, like, and you keep failing, or it doesn't work out the way you think. What do you do for people that are in that zone where they're just like, I keep trying everything and I don't understand why it's not resonating? Yeah. Like, where's that disconnect? So it could be a lot of places. So this is a, a big okay. question. But you know, the underlying thing is, a, have I built a container that shares this? So let's just say, yes, you could do a million things, but let's say podcasting. Okay. This container makes me feel all those things. That's step one. Then when I get into every interview, am I making sure I'm pulling out their magic? Am I making, like, am I really bringing those energies in? Step two. Now I'm going to go deeper. When, as I'm promoting this, as I'm putting on social media, am I using, am I making people feel these things? Because here's the thing about most of us entrepreneurs. We want buy-in a thousand times. We want people to buy into our website and our blog posts and our podcast and this offering. And like, it's exhausting. But here's the thing. If it's all built on the same energy, the same brand, we need buy-in one time. Either they resonate or they don't. Because people who want our medicine, our magic, we don't have to try to be anything about ourselves. People who want it, they come to our website and they say, oh, I can feel something. And they come over to our podcast. And if they don't feel the exact same thing, they're going to drop off. And it's subconscious, right? Nobody knows, but they're, they're ah. craving this essence, right? I always say, if I could make you feel successful, truly, truly successful, if I can give you that energy, that vulnerability that I have, who gives a shit how I give it to you? I can wave a magic wand. I can give you some Reiki. I can give you a course. I can give, like, if that's the thing that you want, it's my job to figure out what's the best, most natural container I have and do it over and over again in the words I choose to use, in the way I dress, in the background of videos, in the way I design my website. And if over and over again, we're just giving energy medicine. That's all that we're doing. Oh, that's a great answer. Thank you. Now, just to follow up, when I did go to your website, I will say it was refreshing. It was simple. Your message was loud and clear. And there was like, Two things, mm -hmm. you know, like I was like, oh, that's easy. I could watch a, a little video about you and then click on a, a, a free worksheet. And then if I want to dive deeper and go into soul mapping or, you know, take yeah. a course, it's there. Yeah. 
It was so refreshing because, you know, sometimes you visit people's websites and it's cluttered with lots mm-hmm. of things. And they could just be lots of, you know, have lots of creativity and energy, but it, it will work either way if their message and essence is clear and coming through in every way they're expressing exactly. it, correct? Exactly. I mean, I and look that. at some of my sensitivities where it's like aligned and vulnerable. This is stripped down, right? That's simplicity. That's get right to the point, very vulnerable, get in deep. It wouldn't make sense for me to have a million things everywhere, but we get so confused because that's why my relationship is so successful. But then I look at business and I've tried to have the million things on the website before, right? I've done that. And I'm like, why isn't this working for me? We, the reason we're successful anywhere in life is the reason we are successful everywhere in life. We just need to map it. We need to say, hey, what makes me feel purposeful, fulfilled, and successful? And how do I replicate that in every container of my life? Wow. That's amazing. So did we touch on everything about that whole sensitivity thing, just so the audience can understand about sensing more and tapping into, you know, the sense, the sensitivities that we have? One thing I'll say a little bit more about is, you know, I'm always drinking water out of a mason jar and a really big mason jar because quite frankly, I'm lazy. So I like drinking a lot of water. I don't like filling up my cup. So I drink out of these big mason jars. Um, But theoretically, if I went to a friend's house and they gave me a tiny little cup of water, I would drink out of it because I want the water. I don't really care about the container. Now, if you gave me a big mason jar of soda, which I don't usually drink, I probably wouldn't drink out of it. This is the thing about life. So many of us are obsessed with the container. We're saying we want this job. We want this number of followers. We want this perfect Instagram worthy relationship or this home with no idea what the essence inside is, what we want to feel. And here's what starts to happen is what happens when our launch fails, quote unquote. What happens when we lose a job or we get divorced or a relationship ends up? We lose our sense of purpose. We think, oh my gosh, like I'm a failure. I've, I've lost this because we don't know what the essence is inside. But if we know that essence without a doubt, doesn't mean we don't have to grieve the loss of relationships or jobs. Of course we do. But it means we can just pour water from one cup to another. We can say, oh, why this felt so good to me was it made me feel vulnerable and zany and free. How can I do that over here? How can I do that over here? And the final note I'll have, just because I think this is an important one, we started in the kind of pre-interview when we first got on talking about some of my photos. And I've got, anyone wants to look, I've got boudoir photos all over the internet. So feel free. But what uh, it's funny that I say that because I didn't feel empowered with my body. For a long time, I felt ugly and unattractive and not confident with my body. And so I said, all right, Mike, you do this work. Come on, you can figure this out. I said, all right, with my body, what would make me feel vulnerable and zany and free? And I thought, Well, duh, dancing naked in front of the mirror. And so every day for a year, while the water was heating up for two minutes, I danced naked in front of the mirror, vulnerably, zanily, freely watching my body, even on days when I felt unattractive, even when I said, ooh, that mark or that twist or that skin crease or whatever, I just watched myself. And it was uncomfortable. I did every day, I did not miss a day. At the end of that year, without even realizing the connection, I intuitively booked a boudoir session. And it was the first time I was nude in front of a stranger. We set up a little studio in my home. And I remember he really helped me to feel safe. I did a, a strip tease. I took off my bathrobe over the course of three songs. So it was a nine minute strip tease. By the time that thing was off, I felt so comfortable. And so I felt empowered, but I thought, oh God, nobody is going to see these photos, right? These are like very, very private. They're just for me, maybe my husband. I get these photos back. Oh my God. I mean, my mom has seen them. I'm sending them to my mom. I'm posting them on the <laughs> internet. I don't care who sees these photos because I feel so sexy and confident. And it's because I knew the sensitivities that I most need to feel. So creating that relationship with my body radically changed my relationship with my body. And for me, it's important that I share those because that story is really exempl- you know, exemplifies my work to me and reminds me of what's so important here. Oh, I feel like I could talk to you forever. So y'all, we'll have to do another another show very soon. But I know that everyone's going to love this episode. And I just wanted to thank you so much and let everyone know how to discover more about you. So you are offering a free 36-minute training slash worksheet um, about mapping sensitives and discovering mm-hmm. life purpose. And that's at mikeimle.com slash map. And everything 
will be in the description of this episode, all the links. And um, you can discover Mike on Instagram at Mike IMLE and Facebook, Mike IMLE Writes. So anything else you'd like to share or anything that I left out before we finish up? No, I just want to thank you so much and just say to everyone, you know, you never have to try to be yourself. If you're trying, it means you're being somebody else. And I am just so looking forward to all of us living a life where we just get to be naturally ourselves. Like we're having coffee with a best friend and that's the greatest gift we can give to ourselves or to the world. Well, thank you for the work that you're doing in the world and shining your light and helping others. And I hope this podcast blesses your life and your business and connects you to people that, you know, need your help. So thank you so much, Mike. Yeah, thank you. Now I'd like to tell you about the essential oil of the day called Magnify Your Purpose. So after you're done working with Mike and you and you do your soul mapping or you do a deep meditation and figure out your life purpose and what your words are, you're going to buy Magnify Your Purpose essential oil from Young Living. And it is one of the best oils to work with for magnifying your purpose in life. It is is a blend of sacred sandalwood, sage oil, coriander, patchouli, nutmeg, um, bergamot, cinnamon, ginger, and lingalang, and geranium flower oils. So it's quite an interesting, unusual mix. And what I do is I inhale, I diffuse, I anoint my inner wrists, the bottoms of my feet, and I'll do some affirmations. Or when I'm working with um, manifesting or following my joy with, you know, following those words that Mike helped me figure out when he was soul mapping with me, you know, go do Mike's uh, free report and then work with the words that you come up with for your own soul mapping and think about those words and use those affirmations, meditate on those words, think about the words, um, visualize yourself moving forward in that direction, making all of those words come true with everything that you do, have those intentions behind your purpose. So whether it's setting up a website or talking to someone or the way you treat your children or the way, you know, anything you do in your business or life, personal or business, these intentions of these words will be the feeling that you want to feel yourself and that you want others to feel. So have fun working with this oil. And if you have a Young Living account, put Magnify Your Purpose on your next order. And if you do not have a Young Living account, you can go to my website or click the tab in the description for essential oils at tabofthepolaris.com. In the about section, there's the essential oil page and you can order yourself Magnify Your Purpose. So everyone, I had fun today. This was an interesting episode. I got a little personal. We did some soul mapping. So I can't wait to hear about all your experiences with your own soul mapping. So feel free to go to my social media pages uh, after you finish listening. Yeah, after you finish listening to the podcast, let me know how how this went for you. If you tried Mike's soul mapping, come back to the post of this uh, podcast on my social media pages and tell me in the comments that you uh, had a good experience, all right? So I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for listening. Thank you for holding this space with us today. May your hearts be filled with love and light. Keep your eyes wide open for signs from your angels. Many blessings to you and looking forward to being with you next Tuesday. <laughs>